So in this lecture, I want to introduce um, how we handle natural boundary conditions. Um, so far, we've talked about uh, geometric or essential boundary conditions. So let me remind you of those first. So previously, we explored minimizing the functional given by uh, i of u uh, is equal to the integral from a to b of some integrand f uh, of x, u, and u prime. Uh, dx, right? Uh, and that was going to be subject to the boundary conditions uh, that uh, u of a uh, is equal to u naught and u of b is equal to u1, okay? So we call these essential or geometric boundary conditions. So if we were to draw what that looks like, um, we were and what we require of our varied path. So let's look at there's x and this is u of x. Okay, so if we have uh, some function, let's say this is u, right? So there's u of x. If I have a varied path, it will it will meet, right? There's my varied path, however we want to say, and it has to come, it has to meet at those locations. So this would be our u tilde of x, right? And so of course the implications here are that when we have these kinds of boundary conditions, the variation of the path, delta u, evaluated at a, and delta u, evaluated at uh, b, are equal to zero, okay? So now let's consider minimizing the same functional when the boundary conditions are actually left arbitrary. So we don't force uh, these essential boundary conditions. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and use our newly developed um, uh, delta operator. So we'll take the first variation uh, and set it equal to zero. So we end up, there's delta i is equal to zero. And what is delta i? So we have an integral from a to b. And we, we're going to take the first variation. So uh, what's the first variation of that uh, f? Well, the first term is going to be uh, del f del u times delta u plus del f times uh, del f del u prime rather times delta u prime and remember that it, with the delta operator there's no such thing as uh, delta x right so this this is the first variation uh, dx we'll call that and let's call this equation one okay we're going to break this integral apart and integrate the second uh, the second term of this integral by parts and so we end up with uh, integral from a to b I'll just leave this integral out uh, partial f with respect to u, delta u, dx, okay, that's the first uh, uh, term in that integral then, plus, and now we'll do our integration by parts, uh, uh, partial f with respect to u prime, now the uh, integration by parts gives us this being delta u evaluated from a to b minus the integral from a to b of uh, d by dx of del f del u prime times delta u dx, okay? Uh, and that all equals zero. And then we can just, uh, we'll, we'll bring these two integrals back together and write this as the integral from a to b of the quantity uh, del f del u uh, minus d by dx del f del u prime Uh, quantity times delta u dx and then we have the boundary term plus del f del u prime delta u evaluated from a to b is equal to zero. Call this equation two. Well what can we say about equation two? It must hold for all admissible variations delta u. In, in the case of the essential boundary conditions we already said what um, what was the uh, requirement on the variations, right? Uh, delta U evaluated at A and del Delta U evaluated at B uh, must be equal to zero, right? And when that happens, this boundary term drops out, right? Um, but what about the case where we didn't force that? So these are not, uh, not the case, okay? Uh, and when we use this, then this boundary term drops out. We're left with only this integral, and we recover the the um, uh, the Euler-Lagrange equation that we had derived previously.
right? And we just had written that as d by dx, partial f with respect to u prime, minus del f del u is equal to zero. Call this equation four. Uh, and let's, let's call this set of boundary conditions equation three, okay? Okay, what about the case where u is not prescribed at the boundaries? Okay, in that case, uh, there is no such constraint on delta u uh, at the boundaries. So the only way that equation two can hold for an arbitrary delta u, if, if delta u isn't zero on the boundaries, is if this del f del u prime is zero on the boundaries, right? So we would write just that del f del u prime evaluated at x equals a is equal to del f del u prime evaluated at x equals b. And both of those are must be zero. Call that equation five. Okay, this case, uh, these conditions in equation five, those are referred to as natural boundary conditions. Okay, I'll also note when so once those are satisfied, then this boundary term goes to zero, so we can make equation two satisfied, and we're still left with the same Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay. So let me let me now give you this uh, in summary here. So in summary, uh, in extremizing the functional i of u, uh, in extremizing the functional uh, i of u is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x u and u prime dx. Um, we arrive at the following: number one is just the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is the same for all types of boundary conditions here. Right, so d by dx, del f del u prime, minus uh, del f del u is equal to zero. And then we have boundary conditions of the form. Uh, let's say one case, call it class A, we have essential or geometric boundary conditions. And in that case, we would have u of a is equal to u naught plus u of b is equal to u1. Okay, we could have natural like we just talked about. Okay, in that case, we'll have um, del f uh, del u prime uh, evaluated at x equal a is equal to zero. And then del f del u prime evaluated at x equal b is equal to zero. Or we could also have mixed boundary conditions. Okay, in the mixed case, uh, let's say a one endpoint, call it the A endpoint, we would have UA is equal to U naught. And then at the other endpoint, we would have uh, del F del U prime uh, evaluated at X equals B equals zero, right? Or we could have the other way around, uh, del F uh, del U prime evaluated at uh, uh, X equal A that's equal to zero, and then we would say that u uh, evaluated at b is equal to u1, right? So this is uh, kind of an either-or situation. So those are the, that's, that's what uh, comes about, um, and that's how you can handle these other, other classes of uh, uh, boundary conditions that might arise.